Previously on Science for All Gravity and acceleration are just two sides of the same coin. Space and time are a single intertwined fabric and it is this fabric that is curved. So in the last two videos I introduced the theory of general relativity. If you haven't watched them, please watch them otherwise this video is going to make no sense to you. Yeah, go ahead, just watch them. So in this video I told you that gravity was the acceleration of a frame of reference, while in this video I told you that gravity was the curvature of space-time. Does that mean that acceleration is the curvature of space-time? Nope. Nope, 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 nope. So what's going on here? Well, the apple falls because of gravity and the moon orbits the Earth because of gravity as well. Well, Newton Imagine that it was the same force, the same gravitational force that was pulling the apple down and the moon down as well. It was Newton who made this amazing unification between the earth and the heavens and this unification has been celebrated as one of the greatest advancements in the history of science. But it's actually false. The thing is that in general relativity, Einstein gives two different explanations for the falling of the apple and the orbit of the moon. Which one is gravity? Well, both I guess. The trouble here is that the word gravity is a Newtonian gravity. The word gravity is very very not helpful right here. It's a bit like when you're talking about the wave-particle duality. Actually the wave and the particle images are both misleading. Or uh, the same when you're talking about continents. Well, how many continents are there? Well, the trouble is that the definition of the word continent, or at least the official definition of the word continent, has come after its actual use. People have been using the word continent long before they learned about their actual definitions. And the same thing holds with gravity. So let's start by thinking a bit about how the apple falls and then I'll talk about the moon. Now in episode 14 I already gave the explanation of why apple falls. It's because the ground is accelerating upwards and we are stuck to the ground so we are accelerating upwards as well. So when you're looking at this apple falling what you're really seeing is the apple not moving but the frame of the camera and me are moving upwards or accelerating upwards to reach the apple. This is called the equivalence principle. It says that everything in an accelerated frame of reference, like ours that accelerates upwards, can be thought of equivalently as a frame in which there is this artificial downwards gravitational pull. But when you really really ponder it, you should arrive to a point where you realize that this equivalence principle is completely stupid. It's plain obvious. I mean, if Einstein had told Newton about the equivalence principle, I'm pretty sure that Newton would say something like, yeah, sure, so what? But the genius of Albert Einstein is that he didn't say, so what? He said, hmm, that's funny, you know, the kind of, that's funny, that Isaac Asimov would say he holds all new discoveries. Because once you believe that the ground is accelerating upwards, Everything in our daily lives is explained without any gravitational force. And that's amazing, he's just removed this huge assumption about our universe. But then I've been asked, if you crash down by a huge rock, don't you feel it's gravity? Or when I'm holding this apple, don't I feel it's gravity? Well, actually, no. Einstein would say that I'm actually feeling it's inertia. Bear with me. Suppose we were floating in deep space where there's no gravitational mass around us. How would I measure the mass of an apple? Well, one way of doing it is to see how hard it is to push the apple. So if I give it a push like that and it's moving very quickly, all of a sudden, it's very light. But if I'm pushing it and it's not moving, I'm having a lot of trouble giving it a lot of velocity, then the, the apple would have a huge mass. This is called its inertia. Its inertia is how hard it is to get the apple moving. And if I wanted to do an accurate measurement, I should try to push the apple with a constant force, which means that I would give it 
a constant acceleration. Now as it accelerates away from me, I need to accelerate towards it so that I can keep pushing on it. One way of doing this, for instance, would be to have a jetpack behind me and then I would be pushing the apple maybe with a constant acceleration, with a constant force. But then if the apple has a constant acceleration and I'm moving with it, I will have the same constant acceleration. So our common inertial frame of reference would be accelerating with a constant acceleration in this direction. This means, according to Einstein, there would be an artificial gravity pull in this direction. Okay? And so what I would feel, well, is actually the gravity of the apple, the artificial gravity of the apple. But this artificial gravity, what it really is, is the inertia of the apple. Similarly, when I'm holding an apple like that, what I'm making sure of is that the distance between the ground and the apple is always the same, so that the apple will remain in the same frame of reference as the frame of reference of the ground. But since the ground is accelerating upwards with a constant acceleration, this means that the, the apple will accelerate upwards as well. And the reason why it is accelerating upwards as well is because I'm making sure of that I'm pushing it with a constant force so that it has a constant acceleration upwards. And what prevents me from giving it its upwards acceleration is actually its inertia. So what I'm really feeling right here is the inertia of the apple, how hard it is for me to make it accelerate upwards at 9.81 meters per second squared. Now that is very, very cool. If you really ponder this, it should just blow your mind, really. And in this sense, gravity is pretty much an illusion. And crucially, this illusion that our everyday gravity is, has nothing, nothing, nothing to do with space-time curvature. In fact, in 1907, when Albert Einstein had his happiest thought, his understanding of the equivalence principle. He could already explain the falling of the apple, even though he had no idea that there was such a thing as a possible space-time curvature. The idea of the space-time curvature would only come to him five years later in 1912. Let's think about it. Would the apple still reach the ground if the ground was not accelerating upwards and you'd still have this curvature of space-time? Well, yes. Actually, yes. Why? Because the apple and the ground would follow straight lines in curved space-time. And since space-time is positively curved near the Earth, near the mass of the Earth, then the two straight lines would curve towards one another and would thus meet. But when would they meet? Well, they would actually meet basically when they reach the center of the Earth, which takes 21 minutes. So if you're trying to predict the falling of the apple by space-time curvature only, you should conclude that it takes 21 minutes to do that. It takes 21 minutes for the apple to reach the ground. Well, I've done the experiment right here and I can tell you it's definitely not the answer. And this should tell you just how weak space-time curvature really is. The space-time curvature of the entire Earth makes the apple fall on the ground, but only in 21 minutes, whereas the, the acceleration of the ground, which is due to electromagnetic forces only, this is making the apple reach the ground in just one or two seconds. That's just how much stronger electromagnetism is compared to the curvature of space-time. And thus, everything in our daily lives is actually fully explained by electromagnetism alone. It is only at very large scales, at the scale of planets and moons and suns and solar systems and galaxies, that gravity, or at least space-time curvature, has a say in the evolution of the universe. And finally, I want to make one last correction with respect to the last video. At some point, I showed you an image like this where space was contracting. Well, this image is wrong for many reasons, but most importantly, because it's not like you have a gravity and the space is contracting. It's rather the contraction of space around a gravitational mass is going to accelerate. It's like a second order derivative thing, kind of like 
the acceleration but the trouble with these second derivative phenomena is that they are very very hard to depict in images like this it's really really hard to get a good feel for what the second derivative things is for what acceleration is well actually you can just look around and what you're really seeing is a world that is in constant acceleration and that's pretty cool Hey, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. As you might have noticed, it's not the video that I originally planned to do, but I think it's important to have these clarifications about the ambiguity of the word gravity, really. In Einstein's general relativity, you should actually never use the word gravity. You should either talk about the equivalence principle and acceleration, or you should talk about space time curvature. Now, one thing I would love is to interact more with you guys like i feel like i'm not getting as enough feedbacks to really understand what it is that you want to understand to what are the questions that you have so please 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 if you have questions comments even just a remark or even just to say hi uh, just to let me know who you are please please do so in the comments it would really uh, gives me a lot of pleasure and motivation for these videos. So next time we're going to get back on track and going to talk about what proved Einstein's general relativity. I put two links to PBS Spacetime videos up there and really really I think that by watching PBS Spacetime videos and my videos and watching over and over you're really going to get a good grasp on gravity. I feel like I've been learning so much in these last few weeks and months by telling you about gravity and by watching these videos and you can do the same. I'm really confident of that and I hope I'll see you next time.